the sound, if it's gone, the scratching. Okay, alright. Slate 108, take two. Slate 108, take three. Not that fast. Slate 108, take four. Slate 108, take five. Slate 108, take six. I can't. I need quiet on the set when we're shooting. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Get into the passengers. Start the car. No, 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 the cut! I said cut! So okay, we're rolling! Like Alright, clear the frame! Wait, are you all this? No, no, cut it! Cut no, it. I, I say well, when, when we roll. Damn it. And I had this idea of a group of people who were trying to become famous by being the first ones to actually capture a conversation with a ghost on film. A thing they hope to achieve by taking a self-made hallucinative drug. And what they didn't know is that this stem cell based drug would get you into this spirit world. But your bodily functions would stop. And the body would die and decay with, while the brains would remain active for months. And the uh, hallucinative aspect in this horror movie built in. Because it was, to me, it was a nice carte blanche to set, to make the character see and, and do about everything you can possibly think of. Kind of um, uh, naive, uh, just thinking. Okay, the next thing that I do is just start making props. And I thought it would, it would be better if I call a professional designer because I haven't, I don't know anything about prop building. But when I heard the price, I went, God, this is expensive, and and I thought. Can't I do this with some you know, plastic skeletons uh, and some, you know, some rolls of uh, tissue paper and, and, and water? And well, I could, but it took several months to do the only two heads, the two female corpses, the hands, and the monster Nerathoth. Uh, this this alien-looking creature, which basically consists of uh, two human skeletons, I just puzzled together. And there weren't any drawings or sketches, I just started playing around with uh, wet paper. And, and to my surprise, it looked, it, it looked quite good. But they took various months uh, to make, layer by layer and hours and hours. But it was fun to do. With a Welsh, British, and Spanish crew of 30 persons and two British, two Americans, and one Spanish actor, the first production day of principal photography starts on a beautiful and sunny morning on February 4th, 2011, on a small airstrip in the interior of Valencia, Spain. I said, well, I can't just have one bloody shot of the actors burying this girl. It's, it's, it's not bleeding theater. I, I have to be able to cut from one angle to another, you know. And these kinds of discussions between me and the DP started to become a uh, daily routine. And obviously that had a negative effect on both the crew and the cast.
the top. I'm going to turn over. No, no, just, just get that head moving. I had this shot where Annette was to grab Ed like this in the, in the face. Take, we're rolling. Okay, right. Bye, <laughs> and, and just twitch it. Again, Annette. <sighs> Sorry, what was that? Again, again, again. again. I thought, you know, it's not going to work. One, two. <sighs> safety precautions, you know. During the third week of production, the tension between director and DP had risen to the max. When a location chosen by Clarkson to shoot a bathroom scene was changed by the DP, Clarkson walked out of a set. He tried one shot, saw playback on the monitor, and he left saying, call me when you're ready to make a movie. And he comes in, fucking walks off like a one, six, seven, take two. The crew, however, responded with taking over the directing and finished the scene without him. The scene had to be completely replaced. During the fifth production week, it was clear that Clarkson would never make the schedule. Even though both crew and cast were working overtime to get as much done as possible, Clarkson and his DP kept clashing. I came on set and they placed Mitchell against a, again, a wide wall, which could easily have been done anywhere in any garage or something. And, and, and I looked at the shot and said, oh man, it's not, this is not going to work. Nine, seven, six, five. Seven, seven, six, six. He, he's, he's, he was so annoyed. Cut back to one. Stay there, Mitch. Keep your intensity. I'm hearing way too much shaking. Something's shaking if it's the lights. He had no energy. Packs up, packs up, packs okay. up. And set. And action. You called upon them, didn't you? You're welcome. Go back to one. I'm still hearing the shaking. I know you're pissed, bro. Hey. I'm still hearing the shaking Where's of the, the shaking lights. Coming from? Cut. And then they, you know, after, I don't know, six or seven takes, they, they, they caught me in. And let's step into frame, step into frame. Still rolling. And set. And action, Mitch! You called upon them, didn't you? It was impossible to, 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 to there was, there were so many scenes missing. It was just too late. About 40% of the film was missing. And so many scenes were unfinished. But they had to wrap. It had to be redone, completely redone from scratch. Most of the people involved just kept saying this, you know, this movie looks great. And, you know, it did. Uh, some parts looked great, but the problem was there wasn't anything happening. And stories was completely lost. Clarkson flew Mitchell Moran in for a two-week reshoot and took the risk of rewriting large sequences and deleting about 50% of the movie, replacing it with entirely new scenes. The reshoots with Mitchell Moran started in August 2011. On one of the hottest and windiest summer nights in the middle of August, standing somewhere on a mountain slope, and at Copeland, yeah, in one yeah. of the coldest nights, in the pouring rain of She's November, uh, three months later, no, standing in bitch. my garden. Set. And action. No. 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 And action. Could you stop that, please? Or do you want to attract all the hikers and hunters in this area with a fucking noise you're making? With an annoying rooster scream of this concentration. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Action. Could you stop that, please? Or do you want to attract all the hikers and hunters in this area with the fucking noise? You fuck off! You fucking cockroach! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> I'm still rolling. And action. 
Could you stop that, please? What do you want to attract all the hikers and hunters in this area with the noise you're making? Get rid of the body. No! No, it's, hang on, hang on. Uh, it's, she, he says, no, no! <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. You cannot shoot a movie like this. This is absolutely insane. I said, well, you know, well, we already shoot it with both actors on set and a crew of 30 people around them, and it didn't work really well, did it? You know, so. And I'm not particularly enjoying this way of shooting two actors separately in two different seasons and on two different locations, uh, you know. I guarantee you, it probably will look more dramatic and more energized. No, I think it does. It just irritates me we had to shoot with this bloody cheapboard camcorder. No one killed anyone here, Mitch. But you know, Stop the actors were performing hysteric. great and that's all that matters. Or I swear to God I'll fucking butt you next to you motherfucker. Honest had most of the sequences which needed to match the old footage storyboarded, but also added entirely new scenes. Some of them were totally improvised, like that housekeeper scene. Anna Oliette was a local girl in charge of providing some props. Hola. Hola. An action and turn. Yeah, that was good. One night Aldous asked her, do you want to play the housekeeper? And she said, sure, but I can't act. He said, don't let that bother you. Action. Oh, sh fuck. I'm sorry, that was my... <laughs> You're fucking cute. I'm sorry, I can't help her. Your smile is way too good. You can't yeah. not help but not smile when she smiles. <laughs> God. And Alda said, if she distracts you, just kill her with an axe. <gasps> <laughs> Wasn't scripted. They just decided it on the spot. Action. Aranza Zudiez from Madrid joined them, and she did a marvelous performance as the ghost Amparo. Pero estoy aquí sola, acompañada por los pocos rayos de sol que atraviesan la ventana para calentarme en este frío ático. Set and action. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Action. Oh shit, I'm recording. Cut. Cut. <laughs> Cut.
Clarkson added an improvised fighting sequence with Aranza Zoo and Mitchell and added the banquet scene where Mitchell is asked to join the family by eating the baby before the finale of the movie. Okay, have a look. Ready. Then Ed Copeland heard that Aldous and Mitchell had done the reshoots, and he immediately offered his help. In November 2011, Ed flew back to Spain while Aldous wrote several new sequences for him. Upstairs, how you mean? Like in the, the attic area? I was ready to get up, and I walked over to go upstairs, like in the kitchen, and all the lights were off. But there was definitely like, move, like moving, like stuff being moved around, and then... No rats. No rats, like footsteps. Human. Human footsteps, right, because it was right above my room. <clears throat> right above where I was laying down. Or, uh, and then stop, and then... There was some... Definitely something peculiar with that room. The actors used to take a nap in be between takes. It was the second room on the right, on the second floor of the house. <clears throat> Just now, eight minutes Just ago. Just eight minutes ago. And because I, I walked, because I, I was like, oh, he must be upstairs. So I got out to walk upstairs, and all the lights were up. And that's when I came out here. No, it was, well, yeah. He's been filming in the garden. Uh, yeah, I'll show you which room. We shot Annette preparing to go to bed there, and uh, Mitchell finding the, the mask in the, in the closet there. A creepy room. I don't know why. And the owners of the house said that was the room with the most aggressive disturbances. I believe Annette woke up screaming because of the voices uh, she heard there. Ed as well, and Mitchell surely heard something that night. Okay, I need to find out what it is. Clear as day. I was wherever's above. Right here, all the lights are off. Right above here, I heard clump, clump, clump. Really? Clump. Right up here, wherever that is, whatever room that is, right there. That is one of the. Yeah, I know what it is. Should we? Let's go check it out. Cause that was clear as day. I thought that's why. Cause I came up, I walked over here. Cause I thought you were upstairs. Walked around here. Ah, uh, you've been here. Yeah, I walked in and I, that's when I looked. I was like, okay, no one's up there. Wow. I mean, I did. I mean, I heard it. footsteps and moving the furniture. I have never been, you know, afraid I'm, I'm not since even years. I don't mind off. Shit. No choice. Otis was looking for a sequence that would gross out the audience with gore, violence, and visible genitals, while still not being considered too gross to feature. So a birth scene was the ideal way to present it. This sequence was shot in four different stages. First, the masters with Alicia Costachobi and Ed Copeland. Then Alicia alone, then Ed alone, and then an insert of a genital prop. Set. And action. All right. Set. And action. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still getting a little laugh. So we have to carry on this. <laughs> Just a second. <laughs> 
That would make a great shot, so I decided to, to climb in. And there's a, a real body uh, to my left and to my right and above and below and I'm terrified the whole thing is going to collapse. And I instruct Ed as he assumes position. Slowly well, suddenly trigger. two elderly ladies <laughs> enter the cemetery just where we were, we were shooting. Oh yeah, oh, there's somebody coming, somebody coming. Yeah. These ladies called the police and uh, police came and uh, it, was, it was actually funny. I explained what happened and they were quite amused, I, I could see. They, they said, don't do it again, but advise us when we can rent this movie because we want to see it. <laughs> and so, somehow it always works out that way with film. You, you basically can get away with anything.